All right, by request, um, a bit on linkage, which is actually not as bad as it seems. Uh, this is the idea that let's just take a couple of uh, a pair of chromosomes here, a pair of homologous chromosomes. Um, let's make them number seven. Why not? Just because. And we know that on our chromosomes we have genes, um, or versions of the gene alleles, in the same locus, as in location, but locus. Loci is, is the plural, so you could talk about genes being the same loci on pairs of homologous chromosomes. So that's one um, gene there. We'll put another one down here. We'll call this B. We'll make that one um, heterozygote. And I'll put another one here. And we'll make that um, heterozygotic as well. Okay, so th that's just the idea that we have along our gene, uh, along our chromosome, sorry, these genes. Now, with linkage, um, because these these two genes here, of B and C, whatever they happen to be, are physically so close, the, the loci are so close together, they always tend to get inherited together. So, <clears throat> so you what, let's put another one in. Um, let's put one here and uh, let's make that one D and D like that. Now when these things cross over, I'm not going to draw the whole thing so it, get, you know, it gets very complicated, but remember we, we've got our pair of sister chromatids and then um, I'll, I'll use different colour just to show you this, the one from the other chromatid pair uh, the, the, the homologous pair, sorry, and they kind of twist around each other and they, it's not a very good drawing is it, but you, you get the idea. Um, we're, these are our mater. this is where we're going to be swapping sections of um, one chromatid onto another. Now because these are just so close to each other, unless you get a, a crossing over, a chiasma, right between those two genes, and they might be right next to each other on, on the, the chromosome. Unless the crossing over happens to be right between them, they will only ever tend to get passed over um, together. Okay, that chunk of DNA, you know, if we magnify that, they're so close that they only ever tend to get crossed over together. And that's what's meant by linkage. It's two genes, and they're, they're unrelated. You know, there's nothing that link... Uh, <laughs> bad choice of word. You know, B might be... Um, to make some protein in a cell membrane and C might be to do with the pigment of your hair. There's no particular connection apart from they're just found next to each other. So what does it look like? Um, what kind of thing might they ask you about this? Well, in your books, um, it's on page 123 if you want to have a look at it. Um, what they talk about is a cross where you've got purple, um, po uh, purple pollen is it? Uh, pollen grains, yes. Uh, purple flowers, sorry. Or red, which is the um, recessive one. And it's long pollen grains, L. Or short pollen grains. Okay. And what they say is they're going to get a dominant uh, purple, homozygous dominant. It's long. And they cross it with a, a homozygous recessive red, and homozygous recessive short. And the F1 generation, the first generation we get, you would expect, I mean, you could do the cross yourself if you particularly wanted, but I'll save you the trouble. That's what you get. They're all the same. Okay, so they're all purple um, and long. Now, when you do the, the second cross, what they're suggesting is that they have an expected value of, or expected ratios of 3 to 1, and it doesn't come out as a 3 to 1 ratio, and it says, how can you explain this? And the answer is linkage, but... I'll just go through a little bit to, to explain what they're getting at. Um, if you remember your, your chi-squared test, um, apologies, your chi-squared test, not sum of tests, um, the whole point of that is to compare two numbers um, between what you expect to see in an experiment and what you actually saw, what your observed results are. So what they have is the, their values are 296, 19, 27, um, and 86. Um, so that's what they actually observed in the experiment. Observed results will often be, you know, slightly off. Now, is this giving us a 3 to 1 ratio? Well, clearly not, because there's four things on there. Um, is it giving us a 9 3 3 1 ratio? Well, we just looking at it, it doesn't look like it is, but, um, you know, could we do something to tell if this is what we actually expect to see? Um, and the way to approach this kind of problem is to look at your... Um, your totals, so 
I've got 296 plus 19 plus 27 plus 86 plants so I've got 428 in total and if I wanted to know what my 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio would be uh, 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 16 so I divide my total number by 16 um, and if I multiply that up by 9 you know I'd expect to see 240 um, let's go back down again three and 80 I'm, I'm not rounding these off but um, you get the idea okay um, is it close to what I expect to see again I'm looking at that thinking well no it's clearly not close the point is something has gone on and what they're saying is well that something is linkage so if you've got a question about doing a, a chi-square test and the numbers were significantly different something has gone on the linkage is the something that could have gone on um, some genes could have been inherited um, together this all this chi square sorry this these punnett square things and the, the dihybrid crosses we start off assuming that there's no linkage okay but that's not necessarily always the case now there's also um, sex linkage and this is the idea that um, in um, humans where we have if you're female you are XX, if you're male, you have XY, and this poor diddy little Y chromosome simply doesn't have um, the same genes. You know, any genes that are above you know, this point, that there is nothing on the Y chromosome. Um, and it means that certain conditions, um, that we sometimes refer to sex linked conditions, sex linked diseases, um, are carried more commonly uh, or found more commonly in, in males. And you can almost think of it, I don't know, let, let's pick this one here. So what's use different colour? Um, I'm just going to call this, uh, I'm going to pick that one out as, uh, let's call it F, why not? Um, so on here we could have F and we could have um, dominant and recessive. The dominant one we might expect uh, would, would sort of mask the effect of the, the recessive one. Over here we haven't got anything. There isn't a corresponding allele, there's nothing there. And it means that certain conditions are more likely to be inherited uh, in males because they don't have the corresponding um, uh, they don't have a, a corresponding region on the Y chromosome containing an allele which will, will, will uh, cancel those things out. There is a further interesting question which says, um, you know, if, if we ignore sex-linked diseases for a second, what if I don't know? Let's put one on here. Um, let's call it. Um, let's call it T. Why not? Because males don't, let, let's say that this gene here was a, a, a gene that made a particular protein, does it mean that in female cells you get twice as much of that protein, or in male cells you only get half as much? Um, and it's, it's an interesting idea, it's, it's something worth looking up, it's something called a bar body, which they won't test you on, which is quite an interesting idea about why it works and how that all goes on. So that's called a bar body, if you want to look it up. But it's not on your exam, so I wouldn't worry too much about it.